So far, we've mostly been considering systems in which there are no interactions between particles. Let's look at how much energy is associated with intermolecular interactions. If we consider only neutral particles, one of the first forces that comes to mind is the dipole-dipole interaction force. This is when two molecules with a permanent dipole interact with one another, and this interaction energy is proportional to 1 over the distance between the molecules cubed. This interaction energy also depends on the angle between the dipoles. If we average over all angles, the average interaction energy is proportional to 1 over r to the sixth power. If neither molecule has a permanent dipole, we can still have induced dipole, induced dipole, or London forces. The interaction energy for these types of forces is also proportional to 1 over r to the sixth power. These are both examples of attractive interact interactions. In addition to these attractive interactions, if I try to push the molecules too close together, the electrons in each molecule will begin to repel the electrons in the other molecule. So there are repulsive interactions at very, very close distances between particles. Because these repulsive interactions are much closer range than the attractive interactions, we can approximate the potential energy of repulsion as proportional to 1 over r to the 12th power. At relatively large distances, r to the 12th will be a big number, making 1 over r to the 12th very small or tending towards zero. So at relatively large distances, the repulsive potential is nearly zero. However, the r to the sixth dependence means that the attractive interactions will be uh, significant at distances where the repulsive interactions are nearly zero. So the attractive interactions work at larger distances or longer range than the repulsive interactions. And we, so we say that the attractive interactions are long-range interactions and the repulsive interactions are short-range interactions. The total interaction energy, U at R, is the sum of the repulsive interaction energy which is proportional to r, 1 over r to the 12th. That term is positive because repulsive energies raise the energy of the system. And the attractive interaction energy, 1 over r to the 6th, and that term is negative because attractive energies lower the energy of the system. In order to replace the proportionality with an equal sign, we need to know the proportionality constant between the potential energy and the distance dependence. First, we know there is some distance at which the repulsive interaction energy will be completely negated or canceled out by the attractive interaction energy. And so the interaction energy overall will equal zero at some distance. If we call that distance the Leonard-Jones distance, if we write the potential energy in terms of the Leonard-Jones distance as u of r is proportional to r Leonard-Jones divided by r raised to the 12th minus r Leonard-Jones over r raised to the 6th, we can see that when r is equal to the Leonard-Jones distance, the potential energy will be equal to zero. Next, since the repulsive part of the potential decreases much more quickly with r 
then the attractive part of the potential increases, we know that there will be a minimum in the potential energy curve. We call this minimum minus epsilon. If we find the minimum of our potential energy function by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero, we can now find the proportionality constant and write that u of r is equal to 4 epsilon times the quantity r Leonard Jones divided by r raised to the 12th minus r Leonard Jones divided by r raised to the 6th. This approximate potential is known as the Leonard Jones potential and models attractive and repulsive interactions quite well. If we graph this potential energy function as a function of r, we can see the general features of this function. Notice that the function crosses zero at the Leonard Jones distance, as we indicated, and that there is a minimum of the curve at minus epsilon, as we required. Notice that at long distances, the potential is equal to zero. At, at large distances, both the repulsive and the attractive term tend towards zero, making the potential equal to zero. That means that at large distances, there are no interactions between particles, and it's only when particles get close enough that they begin to feel the attractive interactions. If they get too close, they begin to feel those repulsive interactions. And so we describe this curve as having an attractive well and a repulsive wall.